The next carrier war might be decided not by who has more jets, but by who still has fuel when the missiles start flying. Imagine a US strike package screaming toward an enemy coast, bingo fuel lights flashing, enemy SAMs already arcing skyward, and then, out of the clouds, a pilotless gray phantom glides in, unspools a drogue, and silently feeds the fight. That ghost is the MQ-25 Stingray, and it could redraw every map of modern naval warfare. I'm Steven, and welcome back to Combat Tech, where we time travel into tomorrow's battlefields. Tonight, the US Navy's first carrier-borne unmanned aircraft, the MQ-25 Stingray. More than a drone, it's a flying gas station, a stealthy sensor hub, and the opening gambit in a revolution of man-machine air wings. Hold fast, we're chasing the technology that buys range, the one commodity every carrier strike group needs to survive. Carrier air wings once dominated within 500 nautical miles of their decks. Then China's DF-21D and DF-26 carrier killer missiles extended lethal range to 1,000 miles and beyond. To stay alive, carriers retreated seaward, stretching Super Hornet combat radius to the breaking point. Worse, upward of 30% of Hornet sorties became buddy tank flights, burning life hours to haul fuel instead of missiles. The Navy faced a brutal equation. Fewer fighters on the line, more aviators in harm's way, and an enemy who could outrange them. Something had to change. But necessity is the mother of reinvention, and that reinvention arrived with a stinger. The saga starts in the early 2000s with DARPA's vision of a stealth carrier bomber. After two decades of stop-and-start prototypes, X-47B flybys, budgets yo-yoing, fleet commanders asked a hard question. What single unmanned mission buys the most combat power today? The answer was aerial refueling. In 2016, the Navy scrapped the bomber concept and rebadged the effort C-Bars, carrier-based aerial refueling system. Two years later, Boeing snatched an $805 million contract. Their Manta-shaped design earned the call sign MQ-25 Stingray. First flight, September 2019. Call sign T-1 lifted off from Mid-America Airport, Illinois, carving contrails over cornfields. Two summers later, T-1 fed fuel to an F-A-18, then an E-2D, and in September 2021, achieved the historic first unmanned refuel of an F-35C, three receiver types in 100 days, proving the concept in steel and kerosene. Milestones logged, but what exactly makes this ghost ship tick? Visualize a metallic manta ray, 51-foot fuselage, 75-foot wings that fold to slip through deck elevators, and a single Rolls-Royce AE3-007N engine that can cruise seven hours on station. Slung beneath the belly is a Cobham Aerial Refueling Store, holding 14,000 to 16,000 pounds of JP-8 fuel. Scheduled tanking orbit, 500 nautical miles from the carrier, pushing receiver jets another 250 to 300 miles toward the target. That alone can snap an anti-access area denial ring wide open. Internally, an open architecture mission bay waits for bolt-on sensor pallets. AESA radar today, EOIR tomorrow, electronic support the day after. Data pipes through high bandwidth SATCOM links, so every gas and go becomes a real-time intel upload. Think tanker, spy, and network node fused into one unmanned airframe. Of course, none of that matters if the robot can't dance on a heaving flight deck. Catapult slam, arresting cable scream, now picture guiding a 52-foot blind bird through that chaos. Enter the Unmanned Carrier Aviation Mission Control System, UMCS. From compact consoles dubbed MD-5C ashore and MD-5D afloat, two operators taxi, launch, recover, and refuel with joysticks and touchscreens. In 2024, the USS George H.W. Bush became the first flat top wired for UMCS. During shipboard tests, T-1 taxied under its own power, folded its wings, knelt on the bow catapult, and roared into the Atlantic. Zero pilots. Full drama. Why is that huge? Because every Stingray sortie frees a Super Hornet crew from tanker duty, saving flight hours, fatigue life, and two human lives per cycle. And when future autonomous wingmen scramble, the deck crews will already have muscle memory for guiding robots. But the Stingray isn't content just passing gas. It's a doorway to something bigger. The Navy deliberately limited early requirements to keep the schedule alive, yet designers baked in room for growth. The same dorsal hump that houses a fuel bladder can swap for an ISR pallet. Wing hardpoints can carry jamming pods or miniature glide bombs. Picture a Stingray orbit feeding target packets to F-35Cs, then flipping a switch to jam enemy search radars, all before topping off the strike package for the trip home. 
and because the jet is unmanned, risk calculus flips. Need to loiter inside an S-400 umbrella to eavesdrop? Send the robot. Need a sacrificial jammer to blind hostile missiles? Send the robot. Every new payload unlocks missions once too dangerous or too mundane for manned jets. Capabilities are great, but the bean counters ask, at what price? The Navy's FY 2025 budget requests $898 million, $683 million to buy the first three low-rate initial production aircraft, and $215 million for R&D that preps Lot 2. Total program of record, 76 stingrays for roughly $15 billion, including control stations and spares. Yet COVID-era supply shocks and coding defects pushed Milestone C two years right. Result, initial operational capability now targets late 2026, with Vice Admiral Daniel Cheever vowing, we will fly MQ-25 in 25 and get it on a carrier in 26. Congress, ever watchful, tied 2024 funds to meeting test goals. Slip again and dollars could migrate to competing unmanned initiatives. For Boeing and the Naval Air Systems Command, the next 18 months are make or break. Assuming the schedule holds, what does the Stingray mean on game day? Shift the carrier 800 nautical miles offshore and spin up a Stingray orbit. Suddenly, the F-35C, already the Navy's longest-legged fighter, can strike 1,000 miles deep with stealth intact. Multiply that by four tankers and a dozen shooters, and you've punched a corridor through any A2 AD zone on Earth. Meanwhile, every Hornet freed from tanker duty returns to slinging AIM-260 air-to-air missiles, or AGM-158C l a 30% jump in strike fighter availability overnight. Range, mass, and survivability all rise in one unmanned wave. Now fast forward. Plug the Stingray's deck-handling AI into a swarm of future collaborative combat aircraft. Add underdeck recharge stations for drone wingmen, and your supercarrier becomes a hive ship. Manned fighters out front, robotic scouts and tankers orbiting like bees, data fusing at gigabits per second. Are we witnessing the dawn of the AI carrier air wing? Every paradigm shift has friction points. Jamming or hacking the SATCOM link could blind the drone. A flight deck collision with manned jets is an ever-present risk. Budget knives could slice procurement if peer threat priorities shift. Yet the upside, doubling combat radius, cutting pilot risk, paving the way for fully autonomous strike jets, is simply too big to ignore. The fleet is betting that careful doctrine, layered comms, and relentless simulation will tame those dragons. So where does that leave the future of naval warfare? In 1922, the USS Langley showed the world that airplanes could launch from ships. A century later, the MQ-25 Stingray proves ships can launch pilots without airplanes. It's the keystone of a new architecture where algorithms, not aviators, handle the longest, dullest, and deadliest legs of the mission, freeing humans to do what they do best, decide, adapt, and win. The next time a carrier group slips over the horizon, picture a silent tanker already orbiting 500 miles ahead, probe extended, cameras rolling, code humming, a ghost that keeps the spear extended, and the enemy guessing. Want to stay on the bleeding edge of battlefield tech? Smash that subscribe button, fire a like, and sound off. What unmanned mission should the Navy tackle next? Until then, remember, history favors the fleet that arrives with fuel to fight, and the Stingray is already topping off the future.